There are two things, all right, that we hear talked about all the time. Death and taxes. Inevitable, right? Well, tonight we'll meet tax protesters who haven't paid their taxes for years. Even worse, they claim our government acts like the Gestapo, breaking down doors, beating the hell out of people, and even killing them in cold blood. Now, all of this in the name of collecting a couple of bucks. Plus, of course, we'll hear from those who say tax protesters are trying to get a free ride at our expense. And the best that they deserve is maybe a heated jail cell. Now, if you always wondered what life would be like without paying taxes, stay tuned, gang. The tax protesters are finally going to pay their dues. Let me start this program by telling you, for three years, I was a tax protester, all right? For three years, I did not pay, nor did I file my income tax. In that three-year period, the government did not come after me. I did not pay because I was protesting the spending of government money, at that time, in the assistance of abortion. I did not want my money to go towards that cause, as I had been a director of the National Right to Life, the chairman of LAPAC and another organizations involved in the Right to Life movement. I came to my senses and went to the government in an effort to pay the taxes. Let me tell you what I paid. I paid in taxes, just to show you, when you want to straighten it out, you can straighten it out. Only cost me approximately 130% of everything I earned, not what I owed taxes on everything I earned. By the time it got around to penalties and interest and what have you, one year when I earned $40,000, I paid $68,000 in tax. Uh, so what I did was find some other ways to protest, all right? And we're going to talk to some people who haven't done it my way and some who have and some who do it another way. We've got at home base Erwin Schiff, author of How Anyone Can Stop Paying Income Taxes. Is that still an operative book, Erwin? Absolutely, Mark. Even, though you, even book, though you went to jail. That's correct. Okay. Well, let, let, let's, well, let me introduce let me the rest of the folks, yeah. all right? Loudmouth number one, we have Martin Dryan, who's a trial attorney. Martin, how are you? Excellent. Good, sir. And Fred Randall, who's a former IRS agent and a tax attorney. Fred, nice right. to see you, Pleasure sir. To be aboard. Let me start with... <laughs> that, that's the first time you got applauded, huh? <laughs> let me... Let me start with Erwin. You just recently released after nearly two years in jail for tax evasion. You and okay. I have done radio shows before, all right? Now, apparently, you haven't learned any lesson at all from that because I understand you're here tonight to tell us that we don't have to pay income taxes and we don't want to. No, I'm saying it's voluntary. First of all, I learned a lot while I was in federal confinement because I instituted two civil lawsuits against the government. And it's uh, what I learned on discovery that's going to form the basis of my new book. But the point is I want to establish one thing more. You said I was convicted of tax evasion. Now, normally people who are convicted with tax evasion, as my attorneys here will verify, are people who falsify their tax returns. And basically the government says that they're lying on their return. Now, in my case, I filed no returns for those years for which I was convicted. Which is a tax misdemeanor. Evasion. At best, a misdemeanor. Frankly, it's not even a misdemeanor. We'll get to that. But at best, it's a misdemeanor. However, I was charged in my indictment of concealing my income. Now, strange as it may seem, when the judge charged the jury, the judge didn't tell the jury they had to find me convicted guilty of tax evasion. When the jury asked the judge, because they saw the difference between the indictment and Quickly the... Quickly now so we can get okay. through the whole show. The right? judge told them that they didn't have to... 
They did not have to find me guilty of the affirmative act of evasion. So while I was convicted of evasion, I was not found guilty of lying to the government, cheating the government, or anything underhanded. Now, so it became a technicality. No, it's not a technicality. I was you never get, get to the bottom line. I, the bottom line, line is in an article, in, in an article, in an article in the Journal of Taxation, the, the American Journal of Taxation, uh, February 1987. They said I was never convicted of tax evasion because I was never convicted of an affirmative act. At best, I was only convicted of failing to file. Now, now what's, since, what's your philosophy on paying taxes? Okay, it's not my philosophy. Uh, the question is whether or not filing a tax return is voluntary or whether paying the tax is voluntary or mandatory. Now, it's not what I say, and it's not what the lawyers say. It is what the law says right here, and I have the Internal Revenue Code right here. Now, Mort, I have two codes, one for myself and one for these tax lawyers. Now, I am telling you that the, the, the law says you only have to file a tax return if you're liable for the tax. Now, I am telling you there's nothing in this code that says anyone is required to pay or is liable for an income tax. Well, wait a second. Now, wait a second. Wait a second. Now, you're not going to run the show, Erwin, no, right? Let me just make I'm, No. I'm going to go from place okay. to place and try and put the pieces together. Obviously, you screwed up. You spent two years no, in jail. No, no, I didn't screw up. Well, you're such a smart... You spent two years in jail. Let me just... Let me come. Zip it. Zip it. Erwin, zip it a second. We'll come back to you. We'll come back to you, all right? Okay. You got plenty of time. You don't have as much time here as you had in jail, but you got time. Go ahead, sir. First, let me, let me say this, that we don't have what is, has <laughs> been referred to as a voluntary system of tax filing or tax compliance. We have a mandatory system that requires the filing of a return. Is there a law that states that? Yes, there is. I'm talking to him. I'm talking to him. Relax. Relax. That's not true. That's not true. Give him the law. Let him, give him the law. That's, a, that's an awful lot of book there, right? That's the Internal Revenue Code. Do you know where if to find says, it in here? Find yeah. it. Where you're required no, well, to find it. Go ahead, let me hear it. Find it. Find it. Step it. What the government is relying upon is voluntary compliance because we have a population in excess of 200 million people. Now, with respect to... You said to, it's the law. It is the law. That Can you quote the law, sir? Well, here's the law. Show Wait a second, here. Irwin. I'm asking him. You want to run the damn show? You get your own. I'll run this one. Tell me the law, sir, please. Failure to file a return is punishable under Section 7203 of the Internal Revenue Code. That's which not is a federal true. Statute. Code That's is not law. true. Yes. The Internal Revenue Code is Title 26, the United States Code. It is a federal statute which requires the filing of a return. An income tax return? Now let me hear now, it. Does, does, not, does it say, here's section 7203, give them the No, code. you open it, you open it. I don't uh, have time I'll for go this to section theatrical 70, crap. Section go to 7203, it. section 7203 doesn't even mention the word income tax. As a matter of fact, give them the code. Just give them the code. Please give look the for code. it. Give them look the code. Look for it. Don't tell me how to run it. Why not? You got your ass in jail. I don't want to go with you. Okay. He's not telling the truth. He's not. Section 6551 of the Internal Revenue Code, which you have right there, says it's a crime to fail to file a tobacco tax return, a cigar return, papers and tubes, and uh, Section 7203. Section 60, 6651. Give me 72, whatever the hell he's talking about. Read, turn to page 7203. 7203. Doesn't refers, mention income taxes. It talks about any return. Ah, any return required to refile. What section requires the return to be filed? It depends upon the amount of income. What section, regardless of the amount of income, what section says I can be liable for an income tax? None. But it's common Incidentally. sense. Incidentally. What is common sense? Uh, common sense. Let me ask you something. Yeah, common, common sense, sense. Common says, sense does not necessarily make, become common law, sir. See, the lawyers make a lot of money. The lawyers make a lot of money. Don't give me this, lawyers. Let me prove, let me prove it's voluntary. Let me hear the gentleman. 7203 me... provides the penalties for failure to file a return when a return is required but to be filed. But is there any cross-reference between subtitle A, which is the income tax section, and section 7203? Does the word income tax appear in section 7203? Any return. So how do you know any it applies return. to you? Well, there could be a tobacco tax return. Is that correct? That's correct. It could be a wagering tax return. That's correct. Now, but it says any tax that you're liable for. Is that, is that clear? No. Oh, no, I can read from the code no. where if people I, are liable. I have to interrupt Can you. I be liable for an income tax? The filing, tax? Of, a return, tax, the filing of a return does not depend upon whether you owe tax or whether you do a refund. The filing of a return is required. You're saying it's required. It's required by law if you have a certain requisite amount of income. 
Now, I can prove in 30 seconds that he's wrong. Let me show you why. 30, I can prove seconds, in 30 seconds, that's all you got. Have you ever defended anybody for tax evasion, Chief Yes. Lyle? Okay, when you defended somebody for tax evasion, the government introduced a tax return. Is that correct? That's correct. And the government said that that tax return was false. Now, did you ever object to the introduction of the tax return on the grounds it was required? In other words, your client was convicted with compelled testimony. Is that correct? I'm not saying my Suppose client was Suppose you convicted. objected. Wait a minute. Suppose you objected to the introduction of the return on the ground. Wait a minute. This is very important. This is very important. Suppose you objected, said to the judge, Your Honor, my client was required to file a tax return, so I object to the introduction of the return against him. What would the judge have ruled? He would rule against me. Why? He would say the return was voluntary, wouldn't he have? No, the return did you was allow required. Your client, did you ever allow your client, did you ever allow the government to use a tax return against your client? Yes. So you allowed the government to use compelled testimony? No. You should be sued for malpractice. It's not compelled. <laughs> The only thing, I'm, I'm, it's common sense, right? You can look out the window. We have to be protected from armed armies that would invade us. We have to have general social welfare. What about poor people? Well, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, you Mark. Have to pay Wait a tax. second, Erwin. Can't, let me ask you a question. In that case, uh, wouldn't we be paying taxes through maybe value-added taxes, maybe sales taxes, maybe all kinds of taxes? Wasn't the initial reason for the tax to protect our borders, for the government to supply us with a defense for its citizens within and without the borders. Haven't we added all the other things before? The foreign giveaways, the welfare, and everything else? I'm not profiting from that. But I, you don't have to be a lawyer not to want to pay tax. It's common sense. No one wants to pay tax. But if a guy doesn't want to pay tax and wants to rip me off and rip him off, he should go to jail Are you and a let tax him break Are you a tax lawyer? No, I'm a litigator. Oh, suppose a man went to a tax lawyer, and that tax lawyer could set up trusts and all kinds of shelters and eliminate his tax completely. Would you say the tax lawyer did a good job for the client? Excellent job. So, you, so therefore, the fact that you use lawyers to eliminate tax is OK with you. Well, I think but your, the, lawyer, yeah. your lawyer should use an insanity defense. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If Wait I minute. was your lawyer, Wait I'd use an insanity I'm gonna defense. Prove. I'm going to prove. And I don't oh, he's going to prove. You've we been proving all night. Jail. His Irwin. turn to prove. We Irwin. don't even have an income. Per Irwin, perhaps if you had been represented by counsel, you would not have been incarcerated. If, no, because I was represented by counsel, I was incarcerated. <laughs> all right, I'll tell you. Next, we're going to meet a man who says he doesn't have to pay taxes because the government is trying to kill him. Stand by. Transportation for the Morton Downey Jr. Show furnished by Quality Limousine Service. When in New Jersey, call 201-785-9071. say we shouldn't pay taxes. There are people who don't pay taxes. There are those of us who do pay taxes. And then there's Erwin Schiff who says taxes are illegal. First of all, I'm not saying whether you should pay or you shouldn't pay. I'm saying it's voluntary. Pay as much as you want. But what I'm saying, it's, it's a crime for the government to intimidate the public into believing they're, they're required. 30 the seconds. Point, but we don't even have an income tax. 30 seconds. More, we don't, you hear what I just said? We don't have an income tax. There is no such thing as an income prove tax. Prove that to and, him. And, That's a lot of crap. Okay. Let, let him prove He'll it. prove it for me. Okay, wait a minute. Have you heard, are there, will you grant that there are corporations in this country that pay no income taxes? So what? But are there corporations who no, pay? No, that's not the issue. No, that's yeah, not the issue. Answer the question, Answer the Martin. question. Answer, answer, the question. answer the question. General, answer it. Answer the question. Are there corporations that pay no income taxes? Yes or no? Yes, so okay, what? Okay, stop right there. So what? These so what? I'll tell you. So what? I'll, so I'll tell right. Hold it. I'll tell you so what. I'll tell you so what. These corporations that you just admit pay no income taxes, do they have income? Do no. they have income? No. Oh, they don't have any income. How do they stay in business without income? What's income? Ah, a corporate profit. It's a good question. It's in holy. 
Oh, is income defined in the Internal Revenue Code? Yes. No, it's not. I got the case law that'll Take say. Take a look Let me at tell you something. True. Here's the point. Are we beyond Corporate, this 30 seconds? Corporations. Really? You're Corporate. in jail, no. and you're the genius. Are we you're not the, the genius. Seconds? Yeah, well, I let think, me just make the I point. think we're over the 30 genius. seconds. The point you're is. We're over the 30 seconds. We have a profits yeah. tax. We have a profits tax, not an income tax. You just proved it. Okay, now. You're wrong. Everyone says you're wrong. We have in the federal statute, section 61 of the Internal Revenue Code, section 61 of the Internal Revenue Code provides that gross income is income from whatever source derived and includes compensation for services and other forms of income. Does section 61 say wages and salary are taxable? Compensation for services. Are you saying compensation yes. is the same as wages and salary? Yes. Okay, can a corporation, wait a minute, can a corporation get compensation for services? Yes. Can a corporation get a fee? Yes. Can a corporation get a salary? Of course. No, it can't. Yes, it can. Sa How can a corporation receive a salary? A corporation can subcontract out its employees. But it employees. gets a fee. It gets a fee. No. It doesn't get a salary. You're telling me that corporations can... are compensated. This is a lot of technical Absolutely. BS. Absolutely. That doesn't mean anything. There's a lot of semantical BS. We all it's Tom have to Reveille. pay. Tom Reveley has a different approach to it. Tom doesn't pay taxes because Tom thinks the government sucks, right? Let's hear it, Tom. Let's hear it. Let's hear it, Tom. That's it. Well, Did you save any whales today, Tom? Uh, no, unfortunately. Go ahead, Tom. We do only what we can. Tom, you stated that you're living in an illegal country, all right, in no. which the Constitution has been suspended, and that's why you refuse to pay income tax. Would you uh, show me how I can arrange yeah. a one-way ticket yeah. for you to I, I base I base my resistance on uh, the oldest uh, principle of all, which is no taxation without representation. Uh, Every four years, we have a we have a mockery of an election. Every two, Tom. Every Once you get four that of out. every four for president. And the president uh, is only one branch of three branches, Tom. I, I, and the president I'm, is the I'm only quite one aware of that. I'm quite bill. aware of that, Mort. <laughs> you have representation uh, through Congress and through your senators. No, no, I don't. No, I don't. And you don't tell me when I have representation. I yes, tell you. you when I have. Go ahead, Tom. I say, I say that those two jerks they throw up every four years to run for president unconstitutionally do not represent me. I don't think they represent you. But if you think you're represented, then you ought to pay taxes. Well, you deserve to hospital? pay taxes. What about the hospital? What about the road? When you come to the show, you rode on the highway. Why those do I have to pay for the paid highway? Those are federal taxes. Those are paid That's by a lot of crap. Tax. You don't know those what you're talking about. Those are paid by about. licenses to buy. federal those highway money. Everyone knows that. We this is Tom's turn. This is Tom's turn. Those are paid by local taxes. Those are paid by local taxes. Will you let? Go ahead, Tom. We're gonna. I, I wish you'd find somebody a little better prepared than this guy. <laughs> I say that the people of this country eat poisoned food. They, they breathe poisoned air. They drink poisoned water. That's right. So why don't you leave? That's right, and some of them do it. Why don't you go to Cuba? In Cuba, there's no Wait tax. Wait a second. Let him finish. Because. Him. Why don't you go to Cuba? I thought of it. Oh, he is going but to Cuba. But the reason is because I don't want to leave my country to people like you. Right. Yeah. People like me. Tom, 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 let me ask you a question. Sure. Would you be willing to pay taxes to the Japanese? No, I would not be willing to pay taxes to well, Japanese. The reason I ask you is you're wearing a Japanese watch, sir. <laughs> that's that's, that's a thing called a Tesla watch. It's supposed, it's supposed to ward off electromagnetic radiation. Another insanity defense. Which, which this here. country is also full of. That's part of the poison. Let me All right, but you're saying you're saying that the government is un, the you're saying the government is unconstitutionally constituted, that the presidency every four years is a mockery, yeah. that the constitution is out. Why is the constitution out now? Well, for one thing, the, the president isn't elected by a constitutional by a constitutional means. If you read uh, par, uh, Article Two, Paragraph Three, which is just one paragraph of the constitution, I defy anyone to read that and say that that's the way we elect the president. You don't have to read the, all the you got to do is The president is not supposed the president is not supposed to be elected by the people. You're going to go back to the Congress 
uh, electing the president of the United States? No, the Congress doesn't elect Who the president. Who elects the president of the United States? Oh, the, College? the electors. The electors? Of the, of, yeah. that, that's the biggest waste of time of all. You well, and I both know Perhaps so, it. but it's if the, the law. Electors elect, if the electors elect, in only one instance would the results of the election have been changed. The provision, the provision, however, is for the electors. I think that it would make quite a big difference. But the fact is that it's the law. And the fact that the law is being broken here, in, in a case that most people don't seem to care very much about, shows how often I counted 30 violations. I went through the Constitution the other day and in preparation for this show. I counted 30 violations that go to the very heart. This republic is over. It's been overthrown. Name but you don't leave. Name but three. he stays here. He stays Name with three. it. Name Occupied territory by the money power. Did and Donald Jefferson Trump. warned against it. Jackson Mort? warned against it. Mort? Lincoln warned against it. Right. Teddy Roosevelt warned against it. And they're all And now they're in the saddle. They and they're making the rules. Well, that's something, that's something we talk about all the time on this show, the fact that the middle class of this country has never had a shot at running this country. We're never asked, we're never asked to sit on any commissions. We're never asked to decide how our lives will be run. We're always told by the so-called elitist intellectuals who never have had to really go out and sweat in the gutter to earn a paycheck. But does that mean, does that mean that we should overthrow this country? Well, there's no way to overthrow this country. We certainly should overthrow this government because this government is overthrown. You don't think there's a way to overthrow in the overthrowing. ballot box? You don't think in the ballot box there's a way to overthrow this country? No. If, if indeed, not. if indeed we could all muster together, all right, get a vast majority of this country to muster together and say, hey, we've had enough. We're going to kick your ass out of Washington. We're rid of the Congress. We're rid of the Senate. And we're starting from scratch. I tell you, Mort, if they, you start with the public school system. Okay, it's compulsory, a system. compulsory public education. What that for, that is unconstitutional, by the way. Compulsory education is unconstitutional. There are people going to jail who want to educate their kids at home in this free country. Okay, that's for starters. Then we move on to the media, which are owned by the same people who are sticking it to us, right? And we get their information. We get the information that the media want to give us. So if the problem is the money power, the money power owns the media. How are you going to get past that problem of information? Please. Most of the people who watch television think we're doing fine. They think we're a free country because they haven't been in the streets and they haven't been in the hills of Northern California. Well, you're free to leave. I don't see anyone holding you here you're with You're free handcuffs. to leave. And you mean run out? You go to Calcutta? What would, we, what would we have done if Washington and Jefferson and Franklin left, huh? Yeah. Well, they didn't leave. And what would we have done more? If we didn't have the money to fuel the revolution, we would still be and a where colony. where did the money come to fuel the revolution? From taxes. No, sir, it did not. I the think money, it did. No, sir, it did not. Where did the, it come the from? The money to fuel the revolution came from voluntary donations from the citizenry. Well, I don't as don't a know. matter of fact, and as a matter of fact, and as a matter of fact, George Washington, as the commander, took no salary until such time as they discovered his expense account was twenty five thousand dollars. Then why did they put in the Constitution? They gave him a salary. In the Article One, the most important and the beginning, and they want taxes because without taxes, you, you have taxes? no government. Congress, you have anarchy. Congress should have the power to lay and collect which is okay. taxes. Does Anarchists Congress lay and collect taxes? Does Congress lay and collect taxes, taxes in this country? Article one. Is the IRS but, sir, it says here, representatives and direct taxes. You've got the taxes. President of the United States and saying you won't raise taxes. taxes. No, there is a big difference between income tax and direct More? tax. I don't well, think Let so. me hear it from Mr. No, I want we, this gentleman to tell us. If we take a look at Article 16 of the Constitution, Article 16, which came into law in 1913, imposed the income tax. It did not impose an income tax. It did not, because it I had did impose no. income tax. It did not impose the income tax. As a matter of fact, see, this is, this is typically of how the legal profession misleads the public. In 1895, the, 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 the Give me Supreme Court, I, got I don't, the case, wanna, I got I don't the want to take a slow log and ride the all the 16th, way to 1913. The 16th Amendment, that was, all the 16th Amendment did is establish the income tax as an excise tax. The federal government had all the power to levy an income tax if it wanted to, because all the powers of the government to levy taxes are in the Constitution. But in 1895, the Supreme Court declared an income tax unconstitutional because it was levied without apportioning the tax as provided by Article in 1, 1913, Section 9. But wait a minute. You've had enough. I want to hear. In 1913, Article 16, which was ratified by the states, imposed an income tax. 
I believe you'll yeah, find what is that, that was never ratified. What is income? It was ratified by two thirds of the states. Tax. Sir, that never went out to the that never went out to the states. I believe that was ratified by the Congress itself, no. by the Senate, and never went out to the Even never went out. Even if it were ratified, even if it were ratified, if it were ratified it's even a tax if it power. were ratified. All right, we're going to hear the story of a tax protester who was allegedly shot dead in cold blood by federal agents. So stay with us. At home base with us, we have James Duell, who's with the Committee for the Restoration of the Constitution. Jim, we've heard from people tonight who say it's unconstitutional to be forced to pay taxes, all right? That's correct. But you take it even further and say it's unconstitutional to even file your taxes now. That's correct. If you're such a constitutional expert, I imagine you were there, of course, when they signed the damn thing, so you're going to take us back for a journey. Huh? Mort, I wasn't there when they signed the Constitution. There's not a person on the face of this earth alive today that was there. However, we have the document that's available to us. And you don't have to be a genius. You don't have to be a lawyer. All you got to know is to learn to read, to understand the Constitution of the United States. It's very clear. It's very plain. It's very simple. Now, these gentlemen uh, have talked. Article, I have, and I'm going to address article, that right now. Article 16. Okay, you want to talk about Article 16 of the Constitution. Okay, first of all, Article 16 did not introduce any new tax. Okay, it introduced no new law. The Supreme Court has always held that Article 16 just defined the tax, all right? Now, you want to further talk about no, Article 16. Why don't 16? you read Article 16? I did. It's now, you want, to, you, you want to talk about what, why don't you read what it Article out loud? 16 is. I'll read paragraph. it for you in just a second. Hold on. Why don't you you want to talk now? about what Article 16 is. Right here in these two books, I will. I will. Right here. Read it. Read it. Right read it. You're not going to get off base until you read it. I'll read it. I'll read it. Hold on. Everybody got a copy of the Constitution with them? Good. Turn to Article 16. Here, read it. Turn to it. Let me ask him a question. Read it. Read it. I'm going to get to it right now, Morton. Read it. Read it. Okay. Read it. Got it. Read 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 what? it. I'm gonna no, read, read it. it. Don't Give tell me what it says. I what don't it want says you to is this. The Congress <laughs> shall have power to lay and collect taxes on income from whatever source derived without apportionment among the several states and without regard to any census or enumeration. Now, that's what it says. Now, the Supreme Court of the United States has held that this 16th Amendment did not grant a new tax or make a new law in these United States. It just defines something that already existed. And that's all I it did. I heard taxes no, wait a minute. That's no, all it did. I heard taxes. Not only that. Income not only without that, apportionment. Not only that. The six, I have documents right here in these two books that prove conclusively that the 16th Amendment was never properly ratified by the state. All right, tell me why it wasn't. Because when you said, when, when Congress makes or proposes an nervous. amendment. You're Tell me why. When, Straight when out. Congress proposes an amendment, Morton, when Congress proposes an amendment to the Constitution, they send it out to all the state governments. The state governments are supposed to ratify that amendment, okay? Many state governments changed the wording. Many state governments violated the precepts of their own state constitutions to have this done. Now, when it came back to the Secretary of State, who at the time was Philander Knox, whose job it was to make sure that it was ratified properly, documents from the National Archives prove that he knew at the time it was not done but he, he, he passed Have it anyway. you therefore brought a case against the government for that injustice that you perceive? You go to the government. Have work. you brought a case? I, personally, I have not. No. Other so, people have talked to the government about it. The courts say it's the problem with the legislature. The legislature says it's the problem for the courts. And what does well, this have to, to do with it? your okay. paying well, tax? Nobody wants to Let address it. Let me make this point. It. Quickly, whether, Irwin. Whether it was ratified or not is beside the point. That it's still voluntary. No, it's voluntary. Even if it, it were voluntary. voluntary. Now, the it's point is this. You'll more. I didn't hear the word voluntary. More. Because I didn't hear the, word the reason why it's voluntary is that there's not compulsory. Is there is nothing in the code that levies penalties. I didn't hear in Show the 16th in the code. article. No. I didn't Show hear the word because voluntary. Because you said he laid a tax on income. Is that right? Okay, what is income? 
Now, has, is income, listen, is income defined in the Internal Revenue Code? In code section 61. Is it defined? Is income defined in the code? It doesn't yes. have to oh, be. Let him define. Let him answer. Is the word income defined in the code? In code section 61. Is it defined? It says. Is it defined? I'm telling you. Yes or no? Yes. Oh, it is defined. Stop right yes. there. Let me read. I got case law. This is the I'll, Eighth Circuit. I'll cite it. Gross income is income from whatever source derived. Did you go to Eighth grade? So you're defining. Hold it. Listen to what he's doing. He's income defining is income? income with the same word income. Now let me read. Let me read from the Eighth Circuit. I'm reading. I'm reading from U.S. versus Ballard. Here's the case. Let me read from the. Why don't script. you read something in there? U.S. versus Schiff. The general term. That was a little. The general term income is not defined in the Internal Revenue Code. This is from the this is from the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeal. So if income isn't defined in the Internal Revenue, in other words, the Sixteenth Amendment didn't say well, wages. Did, did the Eighth Circuit uh, of Appeals there? Did that go to the Supreme Court after that? Uh, it didn't even go up. No. Well, but they said the be, income is not defined. If we can go defined. beyond the Eighth Circuit, if we look to a 1920 case of Eisner versus McComber, which was held. I got the case. It I got the case. Let me hear him, please. The, su the Supreme Court held that income is derived from dealing either in property or capital or services. Property, capital, That's services. That's not true. All right. I, I, Next, I an eyewitness right to here. a murder claiming the IRS agent stormed his home, killed his friend because he didn't pay his taxes. Let's get to that section. Come on. Yeah! you I'm going to introduce you to a gentleman whose uh, friend was killed allegedly by federal agents uh, let me say Leonard uh, and the gentleman's name is Leonard Gintner am I correct Leonard Gintner, yeah you are also a tax protester uh, well not anymore Did but, you, but I still don't pay taxes well, let me ask you a question Did you go back where's that pardon me sir resistors not protesters resistors. Resistors. We're, we're resistors are you still a resistor of course but you pay your taxes now uh, that all depends on what kind. When I buy gasoline, I pay tax. Do you, do you file income taxes? No. All right. is he, is he now let me ask you a file? question. Not at all. Do you make enough money that you're required to file? There was too much. There was too much noise. I didn't hear you. Do you make enough money that you're required to file according to the laws as they stand now? Well, I th I've have, uh, I'm not having any problem with that. All right. Let me ask you a question. On June 3, 1983, Gordon Cole was killed by federal agents in your home. Am I correct? That's correct. Briefly now, tell me the story and what you saw. Uh, three, uh, Gordon Call was at my house. Uh, three men walked into that, er, towards the How house. How long had he been at your house? What? How long had he been at your house? Oh, sometime. Uh, so he was hiding out. Yeah. He was hiding out from federal agents. Oh, uh, well, yeah. You, okay, go ahead. Uh, anyhow, he was there, and three men walked to, uh, into, towards the house, and that's where I couldn't see where they went. They went, uh, Two went into the house, one stood at the front window, and when the shot was fired that killed Gordon Call, <coughs> somebody shot through the kitchen window of those three and put the sheriff on the floor from 5.30 till 10 after 6. 10 after 6. Put the six. sheriff on the floor? He, he, he never come out of the house. Well, you didn't tell us the sheriff was there. How did he get there? He, he went into the house. And, at the behest of the agents? Yeah. And, uh, <coughs> okay. Uh, he was shot in there in his bulletproof vest with buckshot. And at uh, 10 after 6, he was able to get off of the floor and get up, and he walked out into my root cellar and got all muddy, falling in a hole in there. He just got by the corner of the garage, and he was murdered by his own men. And well, who were his own men? Do you have deputies out there? There was deputies there. There was about 20-some people there, and who shot him, I don't know. There was. Oh, what about Garden Call? I understood, understood he was killed, too. He was, he was killed the first shot that was fired. First shot that was fired. Yeah, they shot him behind the right ear, and it came out the, the other cheek. And, and, this you guy, and, the, and this guy was a tax resistor? Uh, yeah, he was a tax resistor. And so that's why these agents came after him, obviously. Well, obviously, uh, for some reason, anyhow, they well, came after him. Do you have him. any other reason to tell him he might have come after him? Well, uh, Any other reason, huh? He, he had, uh, he was in North Dakota. He was jumped by a bunch of people up there. And each time, these people was aiming to kill his son. He fired at them and got them first. 
So he was uh, wanted for murder. He was wanted for murder. Had that indictment come down through a grand jury? No. It just, uh, just wanted for questioning. He wanted for questioning, yeah. Oh, it was just for questioning. Yeah. So they come after him as a tax resistor as wanted for questioning for murder. Right. Which? He, I imagine it was for, uh, wanted for questioning on the murder. Ah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So we're not talking about federal agents coming in and shooting a tax resistor. We're talking about federal agents coming in against a suspected can I say only suspected murder? Suspected, and they did it without a search warrant. They delivered the search warrant June 8th, and this incident happened June 3rd. And he was on arm sitting at the supper table. They, they brought the gun out there later. They cut his hands and their, his feet off. And uh, they're- They cut his they, hands and his feet off? They cut the hands and feet off with my Obviously meat Obviously, you took a picture of that so you'd be able to give us some proof. We can, we, I can send you a picture of his body without hands and feet. It's in the autopsy report. It's in the autopsy, it's in the autopsy report. And Martin, Leonard, you yourself spent more than three years in jail for your involvement in that case. What were you convicted of, and why did you receive such a harsh penalty? Uh, I was convicted of harboring Gordon Call, and uh, they made me do the very last day. Had I been a murderer, I could have probably got out on a third of my sentence. And if uh, other crimes, you get out on two thirds. They took me up to statutory release. That's uh, way beyond the two. I did every day that uh, they could make me do. They didn't give me no halfway house. Uh, they just made me do everything, and I was continually under harassment while Fred, I was in there. Fred, what do you make of Mr. Ginner's story? I mean, well, the IRS agents trained in debits, credits, and firearms. And is this, uh, let's face it, realistically, murderers do get out in an average of seven and a half years when they get a life sentence. This guy served three of three. He may have served three of three, but I don't see any connection between his alleged offense and a tax violation. No, I don't either. Uh, I see more terrorism than most people see when they go to the Army. Well, I see it when I walk through the streets Martin, of certain cities. Martin I, think, Martin, I think it's important to point out that Gordon Call was a tax patriot. He educated the people about taxes, about the Constitution, and in Medina, North Dakota, federal marshals ambushed him to at and attempted to assassinate him. It was only at the point when they were firing at him, that he fought back. That's an allegation, though. No, right? it is you not an allegation. You weren't that's there, so you don't know. It is not an allegation. I have, been substantiated I have affidavits by on affidavits, that. By affidavits, by eyewitness testimony by, and it affidavits. It doesn't substantiate. Affidavits, sir, don't mean a damn thing unless you have the opportunity to go through a full, a full cross-examination. That, I, that is not how, a, how can you do by that when you murder him? By people that were there on the scene that witnessed exactly what happened. That's what it substantiated. Right. There's another point that should be brought out. Whether, whether, whatever the specifics were in the Gordon court, uh, call murders, beside the point, they went up to his house to enforce the payment of income tax. Now, in section 7608, it says that you can only carry firearms in the enforcement of liquor, tobacco, and firearms. In the subsection B, enforcement of any other tax, you're not permitted to carry firearms. Right. The, only, the only authority of the IRS in the, is to encourage voluntary compliance. Now, they went up there not to encourage Gordon Call to voluntarily comply, but to compel him to comply. So whoever was up there compelling Gordon Call to pay income taxes was violating the law and not Well, you know, let me, let me, that's right. you know, maybe I'm being naive here, but let me go back into my own case, all right, with the IRS. Again, I contacted the IRS first to tell them that I had been a tax resistor, all right? They made out my income taxes for me, sent to me my estimated taxes, penalties, the whole damn thing. The only problem I had was I didn't have the opportunity to take my deductions and everything else. Where does this look like, and I wasn't on television, I was no national figure or anything, where does this look like the IRS is busting into my house? Because realistically, after I did that, with the money I owed that they had come to me, they could have come into my house, they could have taken my furniture, they could have done everything. They didn't do it. No. And I was nobody, baby. No, I'll tell you why they didn't do it. I'll tell you why they didn't do it. Because you willingly they got your After they determined notes. your tax, if they went, let's say they got your bank records, which they get illegally, and then they send you a final notice. If you didn't show up and you don't want to pay the final notice, then they may do that. But they didn't have to use their enforcement provisions. And again, there are no enforcement provisions in the code with respect to income taxes. This gentleman will not take the code and show me where there's any penalty. Incidentally, the only Quickly. criminal penalties, the only criminal penalties are in Title 18. In the, in the section of the code which gives the courts jurisdiction, they only have civil jurisdiction, no criminal jurisdiction. That's incorrect. So 
You That's can it. spend some time in jail, baby, for not filing All right, he said it's, here, here is the jurisdiction of the code. It says, for the district courts of the United States in civil actions, they're only given, this is a Man, civil this code. this is so much crap listening to this stuff. Hey, you're the taxpayers. You come down and handle this stuff. Next. Some of the guests of the Morton Downey Jr. show stay at the Meadowlands Hilton Hotel. Let me, let me introduce... Let me start right here with this gentleman. Let me introduce you to Mario... Pepe, is that correct, Mario? Mario Pepe, right. Mario Pepe, all right. Mario, uh, yeah. you too, of course, have run into some problems. You're a tax resistor uh, with the IRS. You've even called them the Gestapo to some of my producers. Exactly what happened to you? Well, I, I was a follower of Irwin Schiff. I still am. And uh, I filed, uh, in 84, I filed a W-4 exempt form, uh, being that I'm not liable for taxes because I was never taxed by the uh, Secretary of the Treasury of the United States. I filed the exempt form, the, the company went along with New Jersey Transit, and they stopped withholding on my taxes. And the, the two years before that, I hadn't filed any income taxes. Well, anyway, a few uh, month or so later, a couple of months later, the IRS sent an unsigned letter to my company. I don't know who sent it to them, it could have been the office boy, telling them to resume withholding of my taxes as if, as if I'm single, uh, one dependent. And the company started withholding taxes again. and. Um, so then I called the Attorney General, uh, Ken Levy, the Assistant Attorney General, and I told him, I says, they're, they're not giving me my constitutional what rights. What did he say? And he says, uh, well, the, the company has to abide by the uh, IRS ruling uh, that uh, they have to, they're bound by. What it. happened says, to you? But this is an unsigned letter. What, I don't know what who sent it. He says, well, you have to do it. I says, look, if they told the company to shoot me, are they going to shoot me? So he left. Okay, sir, what happened? So he says, well, look, your argument was, is with the IRS, uh, lots of luck, and that's the way it ended. So, so what'd you do? Well, I uh, figured uh, I'd better just uh, not resist. I'm, I'm, I'm not that sophisticated enough to take care of myself against the IRS. So I put the, my tail between my legs, and I've been paying ever since. I put out the home equity loans. I'm up to about forty thousand dollars in home equity loans. How much they and, charge you uh, oh, I got for being back in tax? Penalties, interest. Uh, the taxes might have been four or five thousand, like you, and I wound up uh, paying maybe. 10,000. Late penalties. Uh, in 84, they How much you earn that year? About $33,000. How much you pay in taxes? I paid, I gave them $10,000. So you paid them and approximately sold, a third. I sold them another five. They want, approximately they a third, so it means you, and 33 yeah. ends up with 37%. They hit me with another 5,000. I paid 130%, sir. I, I know. Right. They hit so, me with another, I, I have another $5,000 bill. The significance bill. of this is that workers don't own their own wages, because without a court order, uh, Mario claimed exempt, and he swore under penalty of perjury he was exempt, signed a certificate. Right. Some un uh, unknown IRS agent directs his employer to disregard Mario's sworn okay, statement. Okay, I want to go to the folks. Go ahead, sir. Sign. My name is Richard Stein. You're not going to like this, but I'm a former attorney for the Internal Revenue Service. <laughs> <laughs> People. And let me tell you, bottom line, we hear a lot of technical jargon going back and forth. You don't file your tax return eventually. May not be today, may not be tomorrow. They're going to catch up with you. With interest. And, with in interest. And penalties. And penalties. And, penalties. and you're lucky if it's just civil. There are ways. That's not what matters. For 20 right. years. Wait a second. Let me hear this talent. Please, you want to learn something? Let's listen. Irwin, let's zip it for a second. Go ahead. All the arguments that were made here today sound fine, but when you bring them before a court, they're rejected. I think the obvious proof is this gentleman up here served some 20 months in jail or so. The Internal Revenue Service has great power. Most of the people working for the Internal Revenue right, Service are hard-working right. people and honest. Most are some bad apples in any, in any group. However, if you come to someone who is skilled in the tax laws, like myself, Mr. Randall, there are ways to reduce your taxes. And I'm sure now, Mort, now that you are fairly successful, have a tax attorney, have a tax accountant, that is advising you on how to pay the minimum taxes allowed. I don't even pay minimum taxes. taxes. I pay the damn tax, all right? 
I pay the damn tax. I'm not looking for any tax shelters. If these people out here are going to pay it, I'm going to pay it. Right. I ain't sucking off. I ain't sucking off on any of that stuff. That we'll be right back in a second with the rest of the audience. Come on. Quickly, this gentleman. Quickly now. I don't think there's anybody in here that uh, doesn't mind uh, paying their fair share of taxes. Mm -hmm. But what really burns me up is that we should keep our U.S. tax dollars in the U.S. You bet your life. You better believe it. You bet your life. Uh, Mort, I think that the opposite. I think many of the people here look at their pay stubs at the end of a work week and say, look how high these taxes are. Look how much is taken out of my paycheck. Oh, we're all agreeing with that, all right? But what we're saying is, if the taxes are going to be that high, baby, let's use them to take care of the people in this country, not the Japanese, not the Germans, not Owen Schiff, all right? We need, we need tax resistors like this to take a vigorous stand. We, we need so voters to take a vigorous stand. But our congressmen voters. do not voters. do an effective job. The voters, that's what I want, all right? Owen, let me tell you, if I followed you, pal, before, instead of doing it the way I did and going to the IRS, I'd be spending a couple years in the crapper, too. No, and you ain't going to take care of my ex-wives. You're not going to take care of my kids. You couldn't even take care of yours. You're here to sell a book, all right? And that's all you got. Pay them and then kick ass. Come on. Alan Zweibel, original Saturday Night Live writer and Thurber Prize winning author of The Other Showman says, The Adventures of Spike the Wonder Dog is so smart, witty, and inventive that I had to keep reminding myself that I didn't write it. 